Those are questions. There we go. On your flick, are you pulling all the way back and then pushing through? Yeah. Is that? Okay. He's asking uh, with the sidearm if I'm uh, reaching back and pushing all the way through. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So yeah, with the sidearm, it's, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. You know, I'm, I'm reaching back, and just like a backhand, like they say, the farther you reach back, I like to use this analogy because it's kind of, you know, you guys can kind of relate to it. But the farther you reach back with the backhand, the more power. You guys can tell me pretty, pretty simply where I'm gonna have more power. If I reach back to here, or if I reach back to here. Same thing with the sidearm. If I'm reaching back with the sidearm and I go from right here and explode forward, as opposed to all the way back here and explode forward. Clearly, the second one is gonna have more power because there's more momentum building up. Like I told you, it's all about momentum. There's not much momentum coming from here by the time you're releasing right here. That's not much momentum there. But if you're all the way back here, your arm speeds up and accelerates much faster through through the through the swing. So that that reach farther reach back, and, you know that you'll gain a lot more power that way. And it's gonna you know you might be erratic at first just because your your arm's got that much more you know motion back there. But once you dial it in and tone it down, it'll be you'll be able to control it and get more distance in the long run. Okay. So mine was on forehand as well, but just to follow up, how do you get that smooth release out of the forehand? And no matter yeah. even if I feel good about my forehand, right. I got a lot of wobble. Okay. Um, good question. He's asking about uh, how, trying to get a smooth release with a sidearm, and you know I think you know it's 50% grip and 50% release. I think I would say when people are wobbling like that. So I'll go ahead and talk about the release because I think or the grip. Um, just real quick, I know most of you guys know how to hold the sidearm, but just for you to try and clarify it. But but uh, I see a lot of people when they're holding sidearms. There's a gap here. See like right here. Uh, there's a gap between my fingers, and if you're throwing a sidearm and trying to throw it like that. You know, it's, it's, it's not there's no stability there but you know because it's just you just your fingertips are throwing it but if you have here and hold it in the meat of your finger right here like I like to tell people you have you have much more stability you have your fingers here holding at the top and you also have the, like, the meat of your fingers holding onto it so it's got much more stability and your throat you know your, your, your fingers are just there for for stability and if it's if it's like this there's not much stability you don't have that much control of the disc but here you have much more control and it's more stable in your fingers and the second part of your question is the wrist. You know, you, you got to incorporate your wrist. But like he was saying, saying with the arm, that you got to you got to match that with the wrist angle. So if you're, if, you know, the way the way you achieve different angles, and, and, and obviously, you know, you want to throw different angles smoothly, is you know, just the last second is you want to. That's when you want to get your release, and that's where the, the last second you build up everything. For that last second, and with the, and that's where the, that's where it's all at. And how you get that is you really snap snap the wrist at you know the same angle you went back on. So you got to discover the angle you want to throw before you throw. So if I'm reach flat, you know, I want to follow through and snap my wrist flat. If I'm just going like this and I just kind of throw it, see how my wrist never, never, never snap, it wobbles. Now I'll do a second one where I'll kind of snap it. See how I snapped it? No wobble. And that's the big dip. You're just arming. It's the difference between arming the disc and throwing the disc. So everything's building up. You're building it up and then you just kind of kill it at the end because you don't, you don't give it any power. Just, you know. And you know, you, as soon as you snap your wrist, that's when you thank you. That's when you achieve the angle you want. So, those two things I think will really help. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Over the forehand. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's asking how you prevent uh, turning over a forehand, and there's two things that are happening when you turn over a forehand. It's either you're, you're turning your arm over or you're turning your wrist over. One of the two. Okay. So, the, the, some people like to throw, you know, sidearm by turning, you know, bending the wrist, and some people they'll they'll, they'll think they're throwing flat. The last second they roll over and they're like, why am I rolling over? I'm throwing it flat. Well, no, you're not. You're throwing like this and the last second you're rolling over. You know, they just don't see it. You know, it may feel like you are, but you just got to sit and practice. You know, the best way to do it is, you know, just standing still and just focusing on the angles. Don't really focus where it's going. You just say, all right, I want to throw pretty flat and, you know, just kind of focus on snapping your wrist. Don't really include the reach back because that's another, that's a, you know, it's a little bit, the timing's way different. Yeah. So if you can focus on getting the angle right and getting all the, you know, without turning it over too much, which is all in wrist control, like I said, going back and forward on the same angle. It sounds easy, but it, you know a lot of people mess it up and they think, you know, they, they think they're doing something, but they're really not. So the best way to achieve it, if you're having trouble, you know, either hyzing out or going too much turnover, just focus on throwing flat for a while, and then once you do that, work on the angles, and then you can reach and f focus on the reach back. Okay. With sidearm, is there anything with the mechanics that can dial in a closer release angle out in front? With the back, you know, with the backhand, if you pull through straight and you, you shift your weight. You get a pretty straight line most yeah. of the time. With a sidearm, it seems like there's a lot more there's a lot more movement variation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for me, what I like to do is I like I keep my emotion pretty much the same for a sidearm. The only thing I'm doing is um, is I'm moving my feet. So if I'm throwing standstill or run up, same way. So 
I'll kind of go and answer two parts. So if you're doing a standstill, if, you're doing, if I'm doing a standstill run up, say this is this is my disc where I'm throwing behind. If I'm throwing standstill, I'm throwing straight. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically hold my disc straight and, and point my point my feet wherever I'm throwing because my shoulders are gonna line up with wherever my feet are. So if I'm throwing straight, I'm gonna line up my feet like this. Now if I'm throwing around the tree like this way, my shoulders will be pointing this way, so I control my angle with my feet. Okay. Uh, so I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, there's two things I'm changing, my feet and my wrist, that's it. My arm's not doing anything different. I'm just simply, and if I want to throw this way, it's, it's the opposite of Anaheiser, obviously. And, and so I do that when I'm standing still, and then when I'm running up, all I do differently, you know, is, is my, obviously, the wrist control. You have to, you know, control your wrist based on the angle you want to throw. But if I'm throwing straight, I'm running up straight, you know, and vice versa, instead of just standing there. You know, I'm, I'm running up this way to throw square my shoulders to where I'm, my angle of, of release that I want. And, and vice versa, if I'm going this way. You know, so it's, it's a controlling your run up instead of just controlling your feet. Because that's basically what's happening. You're just, you're building up momentum to get to this position, whatever you're in, from, a, from an up shot versus a drive. It's the same motion. By the time you get to the release point, this is your motion. You know, if I'm throwing like this, and I'm throwing straight. Look, the same motion right now as I was if I just stood there. The same thing. So, yeah, like I said, try and keep it simple with the run up, lining yourself up correctly. You know, you're not, you're never gonna throw across your body, and you're, everything's working together. So, I'm curious if you could talk a bit about uh, lower body on your forehand shot. Okay. Um, I, I, personally, I'm comfortable with the with the one one step on yeah. my forehand. And if I try to build more momentum than that, it goes really badly for okay. me. I start rolling my wrist and weird timing. I, I'm just curious if you could talk about. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, lower body is really important in just, yeah, I mean, pretty much all aspects of disc golf, not just disc golf, but sports in general. But, but yeah, I mean, whether you take one step or two steps, you know, and run up, you know, the, the, the main point that I like to tell people is just, is just loading, like, just keeping the weight, just like a backhand drive, you're keeping your weight Instead of keeping your weight on your left foot, you're keeping it on your back foot. And you really just want to keep your weight back until your arm's coming through. You see a lot of people, just like a backhand, it's the same thing. People are going here, and they haven't even released the disc yet. So they're, all their weight shifted forward before their, their power's even gone through. So as soon as you do this, before your arm's coming through, all your power's gone. But as soon as you keep back and push with your arm coming through, that's what, if you're doing a one step, you know, you can still keep your weight back. It's, you know, it's, it's still pretty similar, and if you're, you're, you're taking one step with your left, yeah? That's correct. Okay, yeah. so you can still, I mean, if you're taking one step, you can still keep most of your weight back and load your, and load your, load your, all your power, and just with doing a one step, you know, because it's, like I said, one step or, you know, run up, it's all pretty much the same thing, the same concept, it's building that momentum from back to forward. So, it's, it's, it's all, and you'll get, and it's that, just like I was telling him, it's gonna, it's, you're not just gonna go out there and be like, oh, perfect weight shift timing, you know, it's, it, you're just gonna, you might mess up a few, and a lot of times you have to get worse before you get better. But as soon as you think about the concept and what you're doing and how you do it, you know you'll your body, you'll, you know you'll do it once. I guarantee you, a lot of your times the stuff I'm telling you, you'll do it one time. You know, like, oh, that's how you do it. They all, you know, you'll say, all right, I got to push my weight at this time. You know, and then it'll start becoming some subconscious that your weight shift comes forward and, and it works together with your upper body. But until you're not, you're not just gonna all of a sudden do it. You gotta go to a field or go do whatever you have to do to, to get the muscle memory to be able to train yourself to do that. You know. So are your um, your hips twist um, in that motion? Because I see some like that that back foot following through. I see twist out here sometimes. Right. Versus spinning around. I'm you saying me? Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, even me, even me. I, I you know that that you know I, I I do it wrong also. You know I, I, I see sometimes I get lazy and I'll do you know I won't push my weight all the way through and and you know that just comes you know so for me I, I wouldn't say you want to twist too much. You more want to do a lateral movement. Okay. It's because as soon as you twist, you're doing your your range of motion is a lot greater for margin of error. But if you're throwing laterally and like going this way, your 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 shoulders aren't moving. As soon as you go twisting, you know obviously sometimes you have to, but in general, you know if you're throwing like I said with a straight, so wherever your point your shoulder your feet are pointing, your shoulders are gonna go until you twist like that. Then that adds so many different variables in it. As soon as you go start twisting and rounding. It's yeah. like a backhand. You don't want to. That's not good form to twist like that. So right. it's it, 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 it not. It's erratic, and you're not going to get consistent releases. Okay. So I'd say the same. Pretty much the same thing applies. You want to be more laterally moving, and obviously at the end, end, of the end, you want to rotate, and follow through your hips, yeah. but not too early. As soon as you do it too early, 
your range of motion is anywhere from here to here as opposed to my shoulders. The only way I can throw it is wherever my shoulders are pointing instead of rotating. Then I've opened up my hips to throw in the, any direction that way, which is not what you want. You want to be able to know exactly where you're throwing based on your shoulders and all that stuff. So I think the twisting of the hips is more of a follow-through thing and not a free shot. I got you.